Ice Locked here with Nocturne Gaming, and today we're taking a look at how to survive, build, and research. There are three important aspects to be able to survive early game. First is having a clean source of water, second is having any form of food to eat, and third is protecting your raft from shark attacks. Your hunger and thirst bars deplete automatically as long as you're alive in the raft. Your thirst bar does deplete slightly faster than your hunger bar, so your first priority should be having a clean source of water. To do this, we need to build a simple purifier, and this requires collecting planks, palm leaf, and plastics. So we'll go ahead and craft one of these. The next step is to place this on your raft. Do this by putting it on your hotbar, selecting it, and then looking down at your raft will allow you to select where you want to place this. You can use the R button to rotate this and place it just how you want to. So once it's on the raft, you will need to fill it with three planks, and this will allow you to start purifying water. However, there is one important setup which is you need a cup to be able to collect water either from the sea or from the purifier. So once you have your cup, look at the ocean and fill it with salt water using your interact button. After this, interact with the simple purifier again and this will allow the fire to start cooking the water and turn it into fresh water. So one important thing to note though while we're waiting on this to cook is that your thirst bar depletes slowly. However, whenever you drink any water, it will refill that thirst bar. The most effective time to use any water or food that you have is when it's near the very left hand side of the bar, as it's almost empty. The more full your thirst or hunger bar is, the less effective each drink of water or each piece of food is. So if you're trying to be more efficient, wait until you're almost at that threshold before drinking any water. Now that this is done cooking, you can interact with the purifier again, holding your cup, and this will give you a full cup of fresh water. You now ha just have to click your left mouse button and it will drink and over the next about 10 seconds or so, will refill your thirst bar. As long as you have any thirst whatsoever, it will, it will prevent you from taking any damage to your health. But if your thirst is empty, it does just take about a minute for you to die from not having any water in your system. So now that we have our thirst taken care of, the next priority should be getting some way to have food to eat. Now there's a couple ways to do this, and the first is by collecting it, the barrels that are in the water here, as any of the barrels has the potential to having either potatoes or radishes, and these can be eaten directly to refill a little bit of your hunger bar. Now the other option is we can build a simple grill, and this requires having planks, scrap metal, and ropes. If you have palm leaves, you can make your ropes by it takes two palm leaves to make each rope and then we can make our simple grill once you have your simple grill you can place this on the raft just like the purifier and this will allow you to start cooking your food there are multiple things you can cook in this game but the first thing is is you do need planks to power this and you put a couple planks in there and we can actually cook our potatoes on the grill or the radishes, and this will allow the, your potatoes or your radishes to give you a little bit more towards your hunger bar. The next option is what I recommend, which is building a fishing pole, and this requires just some planks and some rope and will allow you to catch fish, and then these can be cooked as well. So once you have your materials for your fishing rod, you can craft a fishing rod and start fishing in the ocean to gather enough fish. So we'll be back in just a minute when we have some fish and I'll show you how you can cook them. All right, so I do have my fish caught now and as you can see, you can collect different types of fish that can be cooked, but you also have a chance of getting junk out of your fishing pole. Uh, these can be used for decorative purposes basically. But when we have our fish, we do need to put them on our action bar down here and then we can collect our items from the grill. I do have this cooked potato here and as you can see, this does give me a decent fill up on my hunger bar, but we can also cook the different types of fish and this will actually fill your hunger bar much more than using the potatoes or the beets. Now. Each fish does have a different amount of hunger that it refills. 
Now again, you want to be using your fish or your food that you have whenever your hunger is close to being depleted. Otherwise, you get a diminished returns from your fish. So the next thing we need to do is protect our raft from the shark. And when you start the game, he's pretty much just another fish swimming in the water. However, every five minutes, he can come up and attack your raft. He'll bite onto the raft and if left alone, will actually destroy the piece of the raft that he's attacked. So to protect ourselves, we need to build a wooden spear. And this is in the weapons tab here. It just cost a couple planks and some rope to build. So the next thing we need to do is actually wait for the shark to attack us. Oh, here he is, he's attacking. And so to protect our raft, we need to poke him three times with a wooden spear. And that will save our raft tile, but we will need to repair this, which we'll go over in just a minute when we talk about building. A couple things to mention here though, are you can upgrade this to a metal spear later in the game, and this will only take two attacks to get the shark off your raft with a metal spear. One other thing to mention that is if you find the shark attacks to be annoying or hard to deal, deal with, you can lower the difficulty of the game as on peaceful mode, he does not attack your raft at all. Also, your food and water is dependent on the game difficulty as when you lower the difficulty, your food and water will last longer, meaning you won't need to refill your hunger and your thirst bar more as often. It is about a 40% reduction, so your base hunger bar will last about 18 minutes on normal mode, but on peaceful and easy, it'll last about 30 minutes. However, it is the opposite that if you're on hard mode, it can, your hunger and your thirst will only last about 14 minutes. Your thirst does reduce a little bit faster than your hunger bar, so just keep that in mind. All right, so let's move on to our next phase, which is learning how to build. And there are two ways that you can build. First is by making a building hammer, and to do this you need a couple planks and a couple ropes. Once you have your building hammer equipped, you can open up a new menu by holding right click. And there's a few important things here. First is these are all considered structural items, and structural items can only be destroyed by using an axe, but this will allow you to build your raft either taller or wider depending on what you're using. The other main important thing here is learning about the repair function. And the repair function is selected by hovering over it and letting go of your right click and then targeting the section that has been damaged. As you can see on this section of tile, it has 15% health and this one there's no hover so it means it's fully repaired. So for this one, we can just simply left click and every time we spend one plank, but it repairs 50% of the health done to that foundation tile. So other than that, you have the option of building foundation blocks or even second story flooring or other things like walls and pillars or gates if you wanna make a fenced yard. But for us, we wanna look at our foundation tiles and from this, you can see that it tells you the materials needed while looking at where you want to place your item and then left clicking will allow you to select where you want to place new foundation blocks and this will allow you to build it as large or as small as you want your raft while you're in this menu it does tell you the materials needed for each item on this menu as well but one key thing is is whenever you chop something down with an axe you're only refunded half of the material cost. This is rounded down if anything's an odd number, such as the bigger or the solid foundations require three, you'll only get one plank and one plastic back. The second option for building is anything in the crafting menu. So if you build anything like a small storage chest here, then when you place it down, you can place it just like any kind of furniture and select where you wanna place it. Anything that's placed down like this can be picked up and the default button is holding X and this will allow you to pick up the item and replace it with no materials lost. One other tip to mention for you is whenever you're building your raft out and making it as big as you want, until you can get to the point where you can make foundation armor which can protect you from shark attacks, another cheap option is building an extra layer of foundation tiles as just putting a few extra blocks on the sides 
will make the shark target these tiles that are farthest out and will help you in case you can't get to your tiles fast enough to poke the shark with your spear. Uh, this can be really important early game and it just needs a couple extra tiles such as this and that will protect you for a long time from your inner pieces of your raft being destroyed by the shark attacks. And the last thing we're going to talk about is how to upgrade the technology of your raft and this is by using the research table. This requires some planks and some scrap metal to get and the easiest way to get scrap metal early game is actually from hooking the barrels or the chests that are in the water. So we can grab our research table here and we can place it on the raft. Now again you can spin this and rotate it however you want. Uh, but once you have it placed down, you need to just interact with it and it'll open up a new menu for you here. So to research anything in the research table, it tells you what materials you need to research that specific item. So let's say we want to research our simple collecting nets, which is something very important early in the game and we'll talk about it in just a minute. And this is, we need planks, ropes, and nails to do this. So we have planks and we can simply drag and drop it into here. It will only spend one of these items. So when you click research, you'll lose a piece of wood, but now it's unlocked for every item in the research table. And so the next thing we need is some rope. So we can build our rope here and we can research that next. And the last thing we need is our nail, which is built using scrap. So we have our nails and we can research that now. And this will unlock a lot of items for us to learn. So the last step is to click learn on this and you'll be able to build these simple collection nets now, um, which we'll talk about in just a second. But you'll also have the other items that use those same materials unlocked. So as you progress through the game, you do want to go ahead and dump one of every item you can into the research table. And this will allow you to research more things uh, a little bit faster throughout the game. I do want to talk about islands briefly, and this is something you can run into fairly early in the game, even before you really get set up. And one of the biggest things that can happen is you can get stuck on an island like this. And there's a couple things that you should know here and they are built in the uh, menu with the sail here and the two things that we really want to look at is the throwable anchor which can anchor your raft and prevent it from moving around and we'll build one of these really quick uh, but the other thing i want to mention is building a paddle as a paddle can really help you out in this situation so with a paddle you can equip it just like a weapon or an axe on your bar and the paddle will allow you to literally move your raft in whatever direction you want to. So you can move it and get out from these rocks. But the islands do have a lot of resources on it and this can give you things like wood or other materials that are found underwater. And one of the best ways that you can do that is by using your throwable anchor. So a throwable anchor just needs a few stone and planks and rope to make and it allows you to equip it onto your raft you can pick it up and then left click to throw it overboard. This anchors your raft in place and will prevent the raft from sailing away. This is really important as the game spawns everything around your raft. So if your raft floats away, this island can just disappear and then you're stranded in the water. But while you're on an island, you can grab an ax to chop down trees and this can give you extra wood or palm leaves or even some food. And there's also things like pineapples and flowers that you can pick up on the island. On large islands, there's a good chance that there will be chests to be found that has random materials in it that can be really useful in progressing your game a little bit faster. Also underwater, you can pick up a lot of different items using your hook, such as clay or stones that you need for the anchor, or even pieces of metal on the sides of the wall. There's also seaweed and other things that you can find while you're exploring underwater. Once you're done underwater or grabbing the things off the island that you want, to remove your anchor, you just need to go over to it and press E and hold to remove it. And this will allow your raft to start moving again. Before we wrap this up, I do want to mention a few items to you that can be real game changers. And these are built in the others menu here. The first one is the simple collection net, and this requires planks, rope, and nails to build. 
Nails require scrap metal to make, and so it's fairly easy to get from the barrels and the water. Now, once you have the simple collection nets, I've already got a few built here on my bar. You simply place them down like they're a foundation tile, and these can be spaced out like every other one to get the most out of your collection nets, but eventually you want a line of these across your entire raft in an L shape. And this will allow you to collect as much materials as you can for free out of the water without having to use your hook. So as your raft is sailing past, once we get up to some materials here, it should collect the materials automatically. The collection nets can only hold 10 items and then the items will need to be grabbed out of the net manually for them to continue collecting items. So as we can see this plank here, we can now pick up this plank and we didn't actually have to fish it out of the water ourselves. One really important thing is remembering to build a ring of foundation around your collection nets as the sharks can attack these and destroy them and they're not really cheap to build. So it's important to build around it and protect these collection nets so you don't have to worry about the shark getting to them. The next item on our list is making the small storage. These are basically storage chests where you can place them anywhere on the raft and these can protect your items in case you die or are incapacitated in the water. These collection chests do have a decent capacity for it, but when you're playing on normal difficulty, whenever you die and respawn, you actually lose a portion of your inventory. On easy and peaceful mode, you don't actually lose your inventory, but it is a great way to prevent losing items that are really important to you. And as the sun's going down, I have one more thing to mention, and that's making a bed. A simple bed is fairly easy to build, but it does require quite a few palm leaves, planks, and even nails here. But the important thing about the bed is when you lay down in the bed, it can fast forward the time through the night phase. And the second thing is that if you're playing in multiplayer, a friend can put you in the bed if you're ever incapacitated and you don't lose any materials. The other important thing is having at least a bed on your raft. So if you ever do respawn, you respawn with a portion of your health and thirst bar already filled. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying this type of content. And a huge shout out to our Patreon members that support the work we do. Thank you from all of us here at Nocturne Gaming. If you would like to become a patron and get some added benefits, check out the link in the description. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, please leave them down below for me, and we'll see you next time.